All right, I'm going to share my screen for a bit and then we will look at the, the outline from Malayla. All right, so we have uh, in our presentation today, we're going to be looking at four, four areas actually. So we're going to be looking at the curriculum map. We're going to be looking at the syllabus, writing educational objectives and testing and assessment, right? So we'll be looking at those um, areas today. Now with the curriculum mapping process, the overall objective of the curriculum mapping, it is a method that we use to analyze, a comprehensive method that we use to analyze our, our course of study and how we sequence our modules throughout the, the four year um, life cycle of the student. It also allows us to be reflective in how we um, present the modules to the students in terms of um, building. So it's, it's sort of a, a method that we use to ensure that we're building the blocks in a, in a, in a sequential and cohesive manner, right? As we know, the, the matrix is graphical and it, it will allow us to identify gaps if there are any, right? Um, why do we do it? We do it to ensure that there, we're not overlapping. And one of the things that um, if you've had much experience with UTEC um, coming from CAST, you know, we, we offered what we used to call um, a poor man's degree. So um, what would happen is that we would have packed everything into the first degree. And then when we reach to the masters, we, we may have covered a lot of the masters material in the first degree. So this is one way um, to ensure that we're not overpacking the, the undergraduates and we have stuff to, to, um, to spread out enough for the master's students and for the doctoral students. So it gives us a way to streamline our, our courses of study to ensure that we're meeting our objectives based on the course of study and the level that we're at, right? Who does it? Well, the faculty, because you're the experts in the, in the field itself. So um, the curriculum person is there to guide you, but you have input from advisory committees, from industry, from the employers of your students, other colleges and faculties, if you have a cross-disciplinary um, cross um, degree, or if you take modules from other areas, from other faculties, you can have input into, into, into the curriculum map from them also, all right? Now, these are um, two examples of a curriculum map. Um, one of the things I realized when we took the, when I developed the, the curriculum, I realized that I, I went big and I went bold. And um, one of the things I found is that probably the university is not quite ready yet <laughs> to go that big and that bold. So um, I've decided to kind of somewhat scale it back. Um, but I know that some, some um, faculties and some colleges have gone ahead with the original one that I've proposed. And if you're okay with that, then that is fine, right? But these are some, um, some samples that I pulled for you to just look at to see. So if you notice, um, you have the objectives um, for each year and you know that some courses some courses of study, they have objectives for each year of the program, and then they have objectives for the overall program itself. What we use in the curriculum map is the overall objectives for, um, for the, the course of study. Not saying that you cannot use um, the, the objectives you have for each year, but you can use that internally because you can, that is getting down to a little more granular level, which may be of benefit to the faculty itself. All right. So um, this is what the original map looked like um, when, we, when I proposed it. 
you know, I wanted to find out if we had, um, if our if our modules were service learning modules, if they were applied learning, if they were field based, integrative, scholar, if they, um, the modules form part of a scholarly activity. And some of our um, courses of study engage our students in um, study abroad. So, um, what I found is that some, some of the, the faculties are not quite comfortable with this. So, I've just allow them to leave out the, the, the color code in. And so they would just put an X in the, in the box if it is helping them to meet that objective. In this example, I had used um, engineering. Now engineering for their, course, their courses of study, they have what they call an A to K. Um, so their course objectives have an A to K, which they adapted from ABET. So um, I had used that since I had worked in engineering and I had worked on their, um, their EBIT accreditation um, aspirations that they started some time ago, but then they switched over to IET. But um, these were their objectives. So when we're doing the actual document itself, um, filling out the map, the course of study goals for architecture will be there on the left-hand side. And then the names of the modules, the module codes and the names would be included in the top um, section. And then you would map to see if, which of these courses are helping you to meet which objectives. All right. Um, when you get to the graduate attributes, now, we all know that there are some graduate attributes that the university has proposed. These are they. And based on your courses, their modules, sorry, which modules are helping us also to achieve the, um, the attributes of the, because the attributes are really the profile of the UTEC graduate. So which of the modules in your course are helping the students to achieve that profile? of the UTEC graduate, all right? And then for the, the, the template itself comes in three, on three pages. So you have the, the overall course goals here, the graduate attributes, and then the next section, which I don't have on this, is the, the course objectives. So you could actually use, utilize your year-to-year -year objectives in that section, all right? So, um, I'm going to stop sharing for a while and then going to ask Malayla if she can um, share her screen. <laughs> 